I'm here in uh, Tekawiti at uh, St Luke's in Tekawiti with uh, someone you know very well, uh, the Reverend Dr Jekyll Singh, who's the vicar of this parish and also uh, the minister in charge of the neighbouring parish, which is the uh, Piu Piu Aria Moko uh, cooperating parish. And uh, Jekyll, how long have you and Raj and the boys been in this parish now? Exactly four years. Four years. And that's yes. gone quickly, my goodness <laughs> me. I would have said something less than that, but four years. Mm. And it, it's, a, it's a big um, area of, of, uh, of the uh, district. Um, mm. So how long does it take you to get from, say, one corner of the Tikawiti Parish to, um, say, uh, Moko on the, on the coast? Um, it depends on who's driving. <laughs> 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 if Raj is driving, maybe a bit shorter. But if I'm driving, then it would take me an hour and a half. A an hour and a half. Yeah. Yeah. From Moko to Tikwiti. Yeah, it really is a um, a significant uh, significant distance and very diverse communities. Yes. I wonder if you could just talk a little bit about um, the the way in which the two parishes relate to each other. Is there any relationship other than through you as being the minister of each parish? Oh, the Pemper, the Piopiaria Moko Parish and St. Luke's Parish. So when I was appointed here, I was appointed as the vicar of St. Luke's Church and priest in charge for Piopiaria Moko Parish. Um, when we arrived here, they already had a relationship in the past uh, where every fifth Sunday they would have a combined service. Uh -huh. And of course, uh, that is with All Saints Piopio, St. Andrew's Presbyterian, Congregational Church of Samoa in Tikuiti. And uh, of course, our press assistant, Reverend Perepo, was also helping out in the interregnum period as well. So mm. there was an, a relationship between these two parishes already. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I was, we were recently, as you know, in the, um, in the Pio Pio Ariamoko parish for the diocesan discernment weekend. We based ourselves at All Saints in, in Pio Pio. And, uh, and stayed overnight for a couple of nights as we went through that process mm. with the candidates for ordination. And one of the things that uh, impressed me was um, just how well embedded in the community you are. I was, oh. had the opportunity to talk with a number of people from around the community, inclu including the lovely Roman Catholic couple that we stayed with. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'd had a meal there, and yes. they were talking about um, just how well regarded you are in the community. Now one of the things that uh, they spoke about was um, that you find yourself on marae uh, around yes. the community quite often. Mm -hmm. So how, how have you found um, that ministry and, and how has that ministry been accepted? It has been a really uh, a privilege, a huge privilege and honour for me to be welcomed into the marae. Um, I think first of all the respect that people have towards the church especially in rural communities, it's been really remarkable, irrespective of whether they come to church or not. Um, church has a really significant space in the community, so that's uh, when I arrive here as their minister, it's not, I don't think it's because of who I am, it's just because of their relationship amongst the people themselves and the way that they regard the life of the church in the community. Um, with the Marai, I've had the honor to uh, do a tangi, a wedding, uh, well, a minute. I think two, two tangis um, and a wedding, and it's it's just built as a result of the relationships that we have been able to build. Mm -hmm. And being from a tribal community myself, when I get an opportunity to be invited into into Marai for whatever reason, I I say yes, <laughs> no mm -hmm. matter what my routine is looking like. So, their manakitanga towards me have really encouraged me, mm -hmm. and. Um, because I see tribal aspects, tribal cultural aspects as significant to our Christian faith expressions as well. So it's their welcome and their hospitality that they extend towards me, but in a, in a very selfish way, I take those opportunities and just touch, uh, as, a, as an opportunity to touch base with the tribal side of me as well. So mm, it's yeah. a bit of two ways. That's nice, thank you. Uh, one of the things also that's um, I've noticed um, over the last few years is that a number of initiatives 
which connect the church in both parishes with the with the community. Yeah. And I wonder if you could just talk about some of those examples um, of connecting to the community. Sure. So I'll start with our uh, Pam Parish, Peopiaria Moko Parish. In Moko, we have um, a very strong team of Boys and Girls Brigade leaders, um, Mrs. Dorothy Lowry and the family, and all the children in the area come to their program. Mm. So they have 20 plus children in 20 plus in the Boys Brigade and 20 plus in the Girls. Wow. Um, so there's beautiful stories there. In, in Pio Pio, mainly music, which was started more than 10 years ago, um, the Kohanga Reo, which is just next to the church in All Saints Church, Pio Pio, on Thursdays, Kohanga Rio, they close their session in, in Kohanga Rio and they bring all their children to our Pio Pio mainly music. So we have these beautiful opportunities to interweave our lives. Um, and in Aria, we have had few services um, in St. Barnabas Aria, mainly with the support of folks from Pio Pio, but we are looking forward to building more relationship with the community. Um, here in Tikuiti, we started uh, Tikuiti market day a couple of years ago almost three years actually in november it will be three years it's amazing um, and we had two objectives in mind one is because we have such a beautiful church facility here we wanted to open that and provide a community positive space for the community mm -hmm. uh, but we also wanted to raise funds for the church mm -hmm. um, and by god's grace i think we are fulfilling both uh, when we first started we were in our team meeting we were saying Let's just see how this goes, and we will review in two or three weeks, uh, three months' time. Um, and when you come into Tikuiti, that big market day sign, we waited for a few months before we made that because we were not sure whether the market day was going to take off. Uh, but a few months in, and we knew that it was going to, it was going well, and it has become a really positive um, feature of the community. We've had people come from. Taumarunui from Otorohanga, Hamilton, Kafia, Pirongia, and Tikuiti. So it's, it's such a gift that we have this space that we mm. can share with the community. Uh, we also started mainly music here in Tikuiti um, over a year ago now. And um, we didn't know who is going to lead the mainly music session, but God's provision, um, there was this lovely person, Amy, who, uh, Amy Proctor, who a year later moved away to Tauranga, <laughs> just enough time for us to <laughs> start and get going. Um, so God's been good to us. Um, and in all these new things that new initiatives, our main, main objective is whatever we do, we are representing God's love and being that presence of God in the community. So our parishioners have been really dedicated and work really really hard to make mm. everything happen that's um, uh out on the on the uh, car park there you've got the the uh, painted marks <laughs> for the different uh, the different stalls and it's quite interesting watching people turn up for bishop staff meeting and other meetings and they think maybe those are the parking marks and you see people yeah. park in all sorts of <laughs> odd places in the car park yes. but uh, the market's very successful on a great connection with the community that's right so we have uh, because of COVID uh, level restrictions we haven't had regular market days but we get we keep getting inquiries about when the market is going to be mm. so people would message us on our church facebook page and say is the market on and yeah, yeah so it's it's it's, it's got a community a profile that's yeah. right yeah mm. now one of the other things we talked about the other day uh Jekali, was the uh, way in which uh, you've welcomed the St. Andrew's Presbyterian community yes. uh, to be part of the St. Luke's community here. And I wonder if you just talk a little bit about that, uh, yeah. how that came about and, and how the relationship is developing. Yes. So St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church um, in July of this year, uh, they made the decision to close their church. So on the 5th of July, they had their final service. Um, and from 12th of July onwards, they have become part of our um, congregation. But this relationship was already there. So when we moved, when we came here, that was they were already coming and worshiping with us every third Sundays of the month. And as I said earlier, fifth Sundays, we already had combined services where we would take turns to host. So 
once it will be here and then would go to St. Andrews and then another time it would be Pio Pio and so forth. So that uh, pre-existing relationship was already there prior to their uh, decision of coming here for good. Um, I just have a... <laughs> Oh, copy of the, copy of the Times. Waitomo, Waitomo News. News. Yeah. And this was a story on the 2nd of July, Thursday the 2nd. Mm -hmm. I'll hold it for you again. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> I'll hold it for you again. Um, and Terry Tati, who is one of their lay leaders, I just want to read out a brief so, uh, yeah, sure, excerpt from, what he, from the story here. And he's... Terry says here that joining St. Luke's is natural as the two parishes have been having combined services once per month in recent times. When we sit at St. Luke's, we are sitting with people we have sat with at the Senior Citizens Hall, King Country Grey Power or Tikuiti Lyceum Club. Their community is our community and we know everybody before we go there. Uh -huh, nice. Yeah. So I think it sums up really well from their perspective, um, and it's a blessing for us that they feel like that uh, towards St. Luke's, um, that they feel at home and the, their move to Tequiti, to St. Luke's Tequiti is looked at in a very, uh, 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 an organic transition because of the pre-existing relationship. And uh, we, we have been with this, we were aware that this conversation was going on in St. Andrews. So we've been pastorally also being um, sensitive towards it because they had to, as I was speaking to Terry, he said they had to do something to ensure that there's continuity of worship. And I think um, that's something really beautiful because for them, they're having to say goodbye to their beloved mm. place of worship. Mm. Um, St. Andrews was nearly 100 years, 109 years of, uh, of a life of, um, as a worshiping community. But they were really um, r realistic and brave in a way to take that step and say, this is where we are going to say goodbye to our place of worship and move to St. Luke's Church. Um, <clears throat> so that pre-existing relationship helped uh, their openness to change mm -hmm. and adapting to the reality of change. Um, and from our St. Luke's uh, congregation perspective as well, they have been very welcoming and open and adaptable. Uh, so hopefully we are, uh, oh, I'm speaking all over the place, but when they were coming here, um, we did, I did have a conversation with them and say, if they might, would, would it be necessary to have some sort of formal welcome? But they didn't feel it was necessary. Hmm. Uh, and because it's a, it's a natural kind of organic transition, right. Lovely. And so we are. We have told them that uh, we would still like to do something tangible to mark this really uh, significant historical as well as pastoral uh, event. Um, and so we are in conversation with them and the members of the vestry also feel that this has to be from them, not us telling them. So we're just waiting for, uh, for St. Andrew's folks to tell us when the right time would be or how they might like, to, like us to mark that uh, event. Um, and in terms of them coming over, um, because here at St. Luke's we have morning prayer service once a month, so it's a service of the word without communion. Uh, our congregation have been quite open to creative ways of worshiping, and so when our St. Andrew's folks come, it's a, it's a once a month service that they can attend without communion. Uh, when we do have our sacrament Holy Communion services, we also give an option of serving communion in small communion cups. Mm. And in fact, the tray that we have is donated by them. Lovely. Mm. Um, um, they are part of our worship rosters, um, being a reader or welcoming at the door. And Bishop, as you saw the flowers on Sunday, which mm. was from Sue, um, who is uh, from St. Andrews. And as well as our pianist, our second pianist now we have, uh, Colleen. Colleen is also from St. Andrews and she was already helping us out whenever we needed her help. So now she is now regularly on the roster. So we, we, have, we are um, very much enriched um, by them being here, but also in other aspects of our church life. So we are very blessed. 
That's great. Thank you very much indeed. So, as you can see, uh, St Luke's in Tekawiti and the community at uh, Pio Pio Aria and Moko is very much engaged with uh, the community. One of the things that we really enjoy as a diocese is using St Luke's here for many meetings and indeed Pio Pio as well. You can hear the siren um, and uh, you know perhaps that's uh, responding to, to a need. Um, the whole community kind of stops and thinks uh, when that siren goes off. Uh, but we've always enjoyed the hospitality that we've received in this uh, in the, these parishes because it is so much at the centre, at the heart of uh, the diocese and people can travel uh, from every corner uh, to be here. And one of the reasons we enjoy the hospitality so much is because of the, um, the very careful way that uh, Jekyllie uh, looks after us. Uh, so it's been great to talk to you about life here and some of the, the things that are happening. And uh, we pray every blessing on you and on the people of these parishes. Thank you, Bishop. I just have, there's lots of, lots more good news yeah. stories, but I'd really love to share this as well. So in All Saints Church, Pio Pio, four years ago, we were having fortnightly services. So only twice a month. Mm -hmm. And then three years ago, we started having services every Sunday. And since end of last year, we have started once in two months evening service. And this uh, evening service is entirely led by the young adults there. And the next one is coming up in two weeks' time. That's wonderful. Fantastic. Well, thanks very much indeed. <laughs> Thank and I uh, hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about uh, these two parishes and about their remarkable minister. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you for your <laughs> blessings. And thank you for your time. Thank you.